This is Site Designer. From here, you can drag, drop, click, and slide to develop your websites. Let us give you a tour of the app to help you better locate the various controls within it. We are going to divide the app into three sections, the toolbar, the control panes, and the real-time design canvas. Let's get started. The toolbar is where you'll find common features. The first set are workflow features. In the upper left section, you'll find the design for control. This area is organized into three categories, supports query, structured data, and page manager. The supports query is where you may select what supported CSS properties to design for, such as CSS grid. The structured data section is the workflow panel for injecting special SEO data into your page. While the page manager is the command center for all of your project pages. The next selection on the toolbar is toggle breakpoints. This is used to jump to a specific breakpoint in the project. You can also disable all the breakpoints so that you may style your content for all breakpoint sizes regardless of the slider's position. Use the slider to test your design at different sizes. Anytime a change is needed, add a breakpoint to tweak the design such as changing font sizes or reposition content. Use the plus and minus arrows to the left of the breakpoint bar to add and delete breakpoints. The next set of toolbar controls relate to project files and resources. Templates is where you will find customizable designs. Import from the template library and filter by framework type. Under Components, you will be able to access pre-made site features such as navigation menus or photo galleries, or special page regions like hero and footer sections. These components may be inserted onto the canvas and customized. The Resources is where you may import and organize your project images, icons, videos, and documents. The Pages option is where you can add new pages to your project, navigate through the existing pages, or dive into individual and global page settings from the Page Manager. Guides offers special outlines on the canvas to help you better see the available drop zones and nested element structures. From the toolbar, there are three different ways to preview your website. Hit Preview to generate a view-only on-canvas test. Please note links will not work in this mode. Device View will show you the project on any specific device or viewport size. And finally, Preview On. That will load up your website on your favorite browser. The last group of toolbar icons is for finalizing the project. Publish, as its name indicates, allows you to upload to the Coffee Cup servers. To upload to a third-party provider or access the raw HTML pages, click Export. Under Settings, you can specify a name for the project, tweak export options, as well as configure your Coffee Cup hosting information. The last toolbar option is the Help dialog. Here you can quickly access the user guide, tutorials, or mingle with other coffee cuppers within the forum. Next, let's talk about the control panes. 
The second largest section on, is on the right side of the screen. These are the workflow panels for adding elements, applying styles, and configuring special properties. The main control panes are Content, Styles, Element, and Inspector. The first pane is the Content pane. It is divided into three sections, Elements, Components, and Symbols. The Elements section provides you with the page elements to add to the canvas such as photos, videos, paragraphs, and more. Click on the element to add them to the canvas or simply drag and drop them into place. The next section is to manage components that have been saved or imported from the component library. These are great time savers. We have created different packs that you can use for each framework. You can find them in the coffee cup store. The last section in the content pane is symbols. The symbols feature gives you the power to sync common page items such as navigation menus or footers. This way, anytime the symbol is edited, all instances of that symbol will update across the project. The next control pane, styles, is where you will configure the layout, design, and apply effects to your elements. These clickable CSS controls bring your design to life. Here you can manipulate the values in real time, spending less time creating code, and you can focus on the design and its functionality. The control pane next to styles is the element pane, where you can paste your code like CSS or Java. On the element pane, you'll be able to configure element sources such as picture sources or configure URL destinations. Custom code configurations and element attributes are applied on this panel as well. Elements with special configurations, such as media sources with attributes, may be selected under the selected element properties. On the inspector pane, you will find a helpful DOM tree listing the structure and order of all your web elements on the page. This makes it helpful to select an element that may be nested in a container or hidden on the page. The inspector pane is where you will see a read-only view of the CSS generated for each element. The last section is the canvas. This is a browser-based working area. This is a huge advantage because what you are creating will look and feel the same as when the site is published on the web. The canvas is used for the live design view, selecting or reordering elements, and editing text. We start with a gray shaded area, which you will fill in with different web elements. The canvas workflow is drag and drop. Click the elements and drag them to reposition. Hovering over any element on the canvas will display the drop-down context menu, allowing you to select any nested element. You will also be able to access common actions such as duplicate, delete, or edit text. That's just a brief overview of Site Designer's workspace and controls. Now let's create something together.